Joshua chapter 10. Verse number 14, the Bible says, And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. What, a, what an awesome event. Again, just, just how cool is that? God listened to Joshua, and he, does, he listened to the voice of a man and, and brought this awesome miracle and victory. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him unto the camp to Gilgal. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in a cave at Makeda, and it was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hid in a cave in Makeda. And Joshua said, Roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave and set men by it for to keep it. So he's saying, All right, we've got, we still got to go and keep defeating this enemy. Put a, roll a stone over here so they can't get out and then set up some men just to make sure that they don't escape. We're going to keep them here and everyone else is going to go. They continue to fight the battle and, and these people are fleeing and trying to get back to their cities and seek refuge. So when they're done destroying as many of them as they can, because some of them end up getting away, then they come back to the cave. And it says here in verse number, jump down to verse number 22, it says, Then said Joshua, open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. And they did so and brought forth those five kings out unto him, or unto him out of the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, and the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war which went with them, Come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. And, and again, what a great event that would be They've got these, these kings, kings of nations, that might put a little bit of fear into these soldiers because, hey, they're great men. We're men of renown. They're these great kings. And they say, you know what? Put your foot on their neck. You see how low they are? And if God's given you dominion over them, he said, God's going to do that to all of your enemies. And just giving them more courage. Just see, look, this is the position that God, God's going to fight for you. God's given us this victory. And, and just remember this with, with your foot on the back of their neck that, that none of these wicked people are going to be able to stand before the Lord. So God's going to deliver all of them in your hand. We ought to be able to fight our spiritual fight with that same type of attitude or mentality. Who are these people anyways? Who are these wicked workers of iniquity? You don't need to be scared of them. Are we wise? Well, we're going to fight. And you dead sure have no reason to fear. Not at all. Don't let them trick you into being afraid. Because they're going to try to make themselves as scary as possible. They're going to do whatever they can to get you to stop fighting. Because if you stop fighting, how are you ever going to win? We're in a spiritual fight. We need to keep fighting. And if you get afraid, then you're going to quit the battle. Joshua then continues to fight. So he, he, he kills these guys. He puts them up as a curse, hangs them on the tree, Till the evening, because they're cursed people, cursed of the Lord, and then and then you know rolls a bunch of heaps of stones over them, and then continues to fight. And then what he does is he goes back, and it says uh, he he basically goes. And we're not going to read. There's a lot of verses here, but it's all basically just saying that it lists off every single. So like the king of. Um, you know, of Eglon, of Jarmuth, of Hebron, of Jerusalem, of Lachish. He goes to all of these places then, to those cities, and then destroys all of them and their new king that they set up because their kings have already been killed. And they just, he, he just destroys each one round about. And then he finally gets to come back home. Verse number um, 40. Jump down to verse number 40. It says, So Joshua smote all the country of the hills and of the south and of the vale and of the springs and all their kings. He left none remaining, but utterly destroyed all that breathed, as the Lord God of Israel commanded. And Joshua smote them from Kadesh Barnea, even unto Geza, and all the country of Goshen, even unto Gibeon. And all these kings and their land did Joshua take at one time, 
because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him under the camp to Gilgal. So he fought all of those battles before finally just going back to their camp. It's a long time of being in a, in a battle campaign and just fighting battle after battle after battle after battle and taking city after city after city after city and destroying everybody and just, just keep working hard before you finally got some rest. That can't have been easy for them to do. The spiritual life, being right with God and, and being in God's will is not going to be easy, but we can't faint there is a rest coming. Our lives ultimately really aren't that long. Let's keep up the fight and not back down. Because, and, then, and then we could enter into the rest of our Lord. And he could say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what it's about. And we need to keep that focus right so we don't just, just get tired and fed up and quit the race before it's ended.